Hi, I'm Mark, one half of Salado. I'm here with Compute Music Magazine today to speak you through exactly how we make tracks. I'm gonna go through our workflow, the arrangement, the mixing. I wanna start go from start to finish and you're gonna see how I put things together. I'm using today a CR2 sample pack, our own one, and I'm gonna show you how I use all the elements as one to make a track. So when I start a track, I'll start off with a template which I use for every track possible, well, every track I ever do, and I do it by making group channels for each of the main components of the track. So I'll have the mid beats, which is basically the, the mid range parts of the beat, the top beat, which is the top end of the beat. Um, also in the mid beats, I also put the, the bottom end, so like the kicks and that sort of thing. Uh, then I'll also do a top beat left and top beat right. And the reason for that is because when you do go through group channels and you send it from, say for instance, your hi-hat is on your left or going to the left, but it's going through a group channel, the group channel will, will automatically center it because you're going to be sending the signal from whatever, say a hi-hat for instance, to that group channel. And even if it's on the left on that hi-hat channel, it goes to the group and the group is centered, you're therefore going to have no uh, variation. It's not going to go left or right. So that's why I have to make a separate channel for the top beats left and the top beats right and then on these each individual channels I'll then uh, left and right them which I have done there and there and the top beat obviously stays in the centre and the mid beat which is the bottom end as well also stays in the centre. I'll also then get one for the synths and then one for the samples and sometimes it depends on what the sort of track I'm making I might have a vocal track um, but, so, but in this case where I only use a bit of a vocal sample I'll put it into the sample area um, because you don't need to be that dynamic with it. You don't need to think too much into it. If I was doing a vocal, I'd make a vocal group channel, just like I've done with the beats for top and, uh, the top, left and right, um, so that if I was going to be doing any sort of dynamics on a vocal whereby one goes to the right and one goes to the left, I'd have to, and they're going through this group channel, there has to be a left and right in play, which I don't have here, but I would do if I was doing a full vocal track. And then on each of these different groups, I always use the same setup, so I use a, a plug child um, 670 stereo, which is basically just, um, for me, I just bring it all together with it. And I, I don't do anything complicated with it whatsoever, because I'm not really a complicated sort of guy. I just go with the basics and it just all comes together in the end. So I use a pre-master, a, a preset, sorry, and it's a Drew Laven um, vintage mastering glue. So I just find that if I have this on each one of these group channels, it'll just bring together the parts, the elements which are sticking through that group. So you get the actual completed sound opposed from, you know, sounds just stab, coming out a little bit, you know, sound out of place. And then after that in the chain, I'll have the uh, PewTech. I don't know how you say it, but it looks like, I don't know what it looks like, but it says PewTech. And again, I use the Laven uh, Track Warmer, which is again is a preset, you go down to Drew Laven and just click that on, um, track warmer. And that basically warms up all your elements within that group. And then the last bit, I'll use the L1 limiter, and I'll pull this down just to bring up the volume of that whole set. So the whole thought process behind it, and I don't know if anyone ever does this, but this is just my way of doing it, is that the first part, which is the Putec, um 670 is to bring everything together, make it sound as one, make it sound like it's meant to be together. The second part is your Putec um, EQP1A stereo, and that's just to warm it up, make the whole track sound warmer, and you know, have a lot more, you know, instead of it sounding tinny or just give it an overall round warm sound, which you want your end mix to sound like. And then again, the L1 uh, limiter, and that's just to solely to bring up the volume of the track. Um, a lot of people don't do it this way, but I do it just because it. I've tried recently, um, you know, doing it without, because I've been in the studio with loads of different producers and they just don't use this whatsoever. But for me, because I'm just so used to doing it, um, it's just my way of, of doing stuff and it just brings it all together. And I always end up getting a lot better mix doing this than what I would do uh, without. So that's each of the individual group, uh, group tracks. Then also on the master, I'll have an Ozone 8 running, um, which I think is just amazing to give you an idea of what the master will actually sound like. So sometimes I'll make the track without the Ozone on, um, but most of the time I'll have always have it on because it gives me, you know, 
like I said, an idea of how it's going to sound. And I, I just find it a lot easier. I'll flick in between it being on and off just to get an idea of where it sits, the actual mix pre-mastering. Um, maybe mess around with it, then turn it back on, mess around with it again, and, and then eventually I'll get the right idea of where I'm going. And the reason why I use this Ozone is because, like I say, I'm not te technical in any way, shape or form. And this piece of equipment is just so good that you can run, if you loop the main part of the track where you've got everything going off, so say if you've got your bass line, all your beats in, your synth on top, maybe your vocals, so you're basically at that point of the track, which is like the loudest, all you have to do is press this master assistant here. <coughs> and then I always do target for CD quality, uh, intensity, medium. I think if you go low, you're probably not doing enough. If you go high, you run the risk of hearing something which isn't going to be the actual end product. So I just keep it medium, dead easy. Click next. Um, I mean, you play the audio and it'll just run the analysis for you and just give you a basic master. And I'll do that with all my tracks, you know, when I play out as well. So if I'm, if I want to test out one of these tracks, I'll always have my own self master, which is just this Ozone 8 um, preset option, done, dead easy. I mean, also on the master, I use this Camelback, which is, I have no idea what it does, but Camelback, actual the artist camel fat told me to use this camel fat and just said that all you need to do on here is select clear preset and it will stop your master from um from clipping i've got no idea how it does it but it does it and if we just play the tune here you'll see this is the master here so let me just do it without it sounds the same but technically isn't I'm doing it on camera so it's not working now, but usually that master would show it is clipping. So you just turn it on as that blank template and it'll just take off all the clipping and just give you a better sounding track. Even though I don't know if it sounds different, but I just know that when you see the actual file afterwards, uh, you don't have any clipping on it. <coughs> I just keep things tidy, do these um, these folders on Cubase. It's probably the same on Ableton and Logic or whatever you might use. Um, just because when I make tracks, they end up having lots and lots of different um, elements to it. So this way it just keeps it tidy. So then next I'll start making a beat. Again, I've made a folder for it. I've opened up the folder here in Cubase and you can see each of the in individual elements. A lot of this stuff might be pretty basic and straightforward, so I'll just skip through it dead quickly. But for those of you who want to know what I do, I'll just briefly show you. So say if I just take a loop here, in the main part of the track where everything's going off. That bit there. So start with the kick. Again, when you when making tracks, I think it's imperative that you find the best samples. So I'll search them. I mean, I've got go-to sample packs. And I usually go for the analog based sample packs, the ones where they've actually taken from machines so you get the, the best um, sounding quality because it makes life a lot easier in the long run and you just get a better sounding track so this kick here sounds good it's solid it's got everything going on and all I need to do on this is because I found a good sample to start with I use an SSL compressor uh, a stereo comp and again it's just so easy this is um, all I do is mess around with the threshold um, and in this case here I've hardly used any, but you can see the compression itself is just kicking just above 4 dB. If I take it off, you can hear it's quite loose. If you turn it on, it just, tight, it just tightens up that kick, makes a massive difference in the mix. But also what it does, what I've noticed is, if you put too much, too much of it on, it takes the bottom end out. So you just gotta really just mess around. So that's it there. And I just mess around, mess around with the threshold up until I get the perfect sounding um, solid kick. And then I use an EQ on it, which is obviously self-explanatory. Uh, I use a Fab Filter Pro Q3, um, turn up the 50 hertz, and basically it's pretty straightforward. You just do it by ear, and whatever works for you, whatever sounds best, just do that. And then with that kick. As I spoke about the group channels earlier, I send this over to the mid beats. I call it mid beats, but it's probably should be the low beats, but whatever. That's just what I call it. And then that'll get sent 
via the send. Um, I send the whole lot over to the the mid beat area. And now with the clap again, I look for decent claps, and I usually use quite a few of them um, to give you the full sound. So in this case, I've used a clap and a snare. This is the clap. And again, on this one, I've used the SSL comp. As I said earlier, um, I use it on all my, all the elements of the track, usually. So you've got to be careful when you use this um, SSL comp, because if you use it too much and go over your mix too in depth with it, you, you, you'll lose the width of each of the sounds. So always do it by ear. And I, I'll flick between um, my monitors and my headphones just to get an idea. I mean, I'll start doing the main mix and the main bulk of a track. On my head, on these um, monitors, and then I'll go once I've got a finished track on my headphones. I mix it again on my headphones, usually sat in front of the TV. Then the next day I'll come back and then listen to a new mix which I've done on my headphones, and then mix it again on these. And then usually you'll get a good sounding mix. So again on this, like I said, use the SFL comp, the Fab Filter EQ. I take the bottom end out. I also take the top end out all the time on pretty much everything because. Um, in this area here, particularly the top end, you always have like a, a, a really high frequency that usually you can't hear. You can hear it in a club because if you have a bad mix of a track and you have too much top end here, you usually come out of a headache. You're not hearing it, but you're feeling it. Um, and like everyone does, or everyone should do, you take the bottom end out of the clap. Um, and again, it's just a whole process you just do by ear. I then use the snare, which is this. The reason why I use this snare is because that's going to fill the dynamics that the clap doesn't have. I've taken the bottom end out of the clap um, and this snare will fill that bottom end to a degree, but it'll fill the mid range of it, which will then give it a punchiness through the mix, which is really important because if you play, if I play the track without that snare, there's no punch if you play with the snare. It, it basically, boosts up that clap. I, I, I focus on the clap being the lead and the snare is there just to fill in the dynamics that you're missing or what that clap might mix, that miss. You see, I could go on the clap itself and go on the EQ and try to turn up the mid, but that's not gonna give you the dynamics. It's just gonna bring out whatever dynamics in there, which there isn't enough to fill that void, which that snare can do. So if you hear them together, it gives you a sound of your own clap. And on this, on this snare, I've done quite a few bits to it. Again, like I said, I EQ it. I brought it up around the 200 mark, which is the mid range area, which will give it warmth. 200 usually is like the warm area of, of anything. And like I said earlier, I've taken out the top end, not too much of it, but let's do that again. <coughs> around the 20K mark. Um, you don't lose much at that area. You just, um, you just have better clarity, better warmth in it. And then I've got I've got a kickstart on it. I've got no idea why that shouldn't be on. It's probably turned off. I've got the L1 limiter. This is now to bring all the elements of that um, snare uh, forward, bring it up, and make it sound you know a bit more in your face. I then use this. Uh, Reverb remover, so I don't know why I've used this. I'll play, play it without it. There's no reason why that's on there. I've got no idea why it's on. Um, SSL comp, again, like I say, I use it on everything. Gives it a bit more warmth, tightens it all up. Don't use it too much, otherwise you'll end up losing the dynamics of the, of the uh, sound. And then what I've done here, I've used a fab filter Saturn. So this is a saturation unit. Um, which will make things a bit more crispier. Um, it'll make it snap a bit more. So if I play it with this on, and um, that's with it, this is with it off, sorry. And I'll play it with it on. You just got that bit more of a snap, a bit more on your face. It's a bit more of a, I mean, it's very similar to what an EQ can do, but I just find that the fab fill, sorry, that the, um, that the Saturn, the Fab Filter Saturn um, just gives it a bit more than what the Fab Filter EQ would do, so I fully recommend that. I wouldn't use it on everything, but 
or certain elements of the track that you can't actually EQ in because sometimes you'll think, oh, here's a synth. Why can't I get it to sound in place? Just use this fan filter Saturn and that will be will do the job for you. So if we go on to the hats, I use quite a few hats in the track. And this is where you'll find that I'll, I'll use the group track top beats right and left, which I described earlier. So you'll see here, this is multi-hat multi R, so that means multi-hat right. So if you look on here, you can see that I've got this part of the um, hats sent over to the right speaker. Uh, then I've got multi-hat left, which is a different hat, which is sent to the left speaker. This is to give it more dynamic range in the mix. Um, and I'll send them to, in fact, that's not sent there, but it will be now, uh, to top beats left, where the multi-hat left goes, and the multi-hat right will be sent to the group channel, top beats right. Again, like I said at the beginning, you need it to go to uh, a group which is going to represent the position where you're putting it. Because if you put it in the middle one, you're going to lose a whole you turn it this right or left here. So what I do with a lot of my hats, especially especially if we've got multiple of them, and it's going like this, I put a kickstart on it. This will give it more life in the track and it will also make way, it will dip it down a little bit for the um, for the kick to come through. And the kickstart is really, really simple to use. It's by Nicky Romero. And I, this is what I use to sidechain everything because it's just the most simplest thing you can possibly use. Um, I find it a lot of messing around when you've got to use a, um, a sidechain compressions and sorry, sidechain compressors and you've got to um, send bits and bobs to everywhere to get it to work and to have it triggered by a kick or triggered by whatever it's going to be. This here makes it very, very simple. You basically just put it on your insert and this bit here, the mix, the mix control will determine how much side chain you do. The only bad thing about this is you can only really step it to the kick if you're ever going to side chain something to like a, a sound or a snare for whatever reason you might do, um, you can't because this is just basically on the kick, keeping it very simple. And there's loads of different options here. The classic chain, which is that one, it gives it more room for the kick. And you can hear when I play it. And there's also different sizes you can choose. And again, you use the mix area here to determine how much of it's actually kicking in place. On this track itself, I've just used a free punch, which basically means that it's a far tighter. Because it's only a hi-hat, so I don't need it to dip out too much. I just need it to dip out a little bit to give the, the pattern of a hi-hat a bit more life in the mix and to drop out for the kick. So if I play it with a tune itself, or I'll play it with just a beat. I'll play it with outs. You see, it's just quite in your face, quite prominent. I'll stick it on with a kick start on. You can hear it dipping in and out, which be, which gives it a lot more life within the track. Um, I then again use a fab filter, which you use on everything you should use use if you're going to EQ it. Uh, the L2 um, Ultimaxer which is another way of basically just bringing it up within the mix, bringing out each of the individual elements of the sound. So again, I'm not very technical, but this here is really easy to use. I'll just stick it on and I'll just bring the threshold down to whatever sounds right, just to basically bring up all the elements to make that sound fuller. So say an example of which would be, um, you've got the sound and then within it, you've got the mid range area of that sound, which is a little bit low within the mix of that sound. This threshold is basically just going to push everything up and just give it a bit more, you know, life. Um, and then I use the Fab Filter Saturn again, um, which is just saturating it. And it gives you a bit more um, chance to bring up certain elements. And in this case here, I wanted it to sound a little acidy because the track itself is quite acid sounding. So by bringing up these elements, the top end and the mid, oh, the two areas of the top. 
the two areas of the top end. So you, you can click through here, there's loads of different options. I use this one because it gives you all these different sections which you can control. So if we play it, this is without it now, I'll have to mix it back on. And you can hear that makes it sizzle a bit more, particularly if you make an, an acidy sounding track, you'll hear that the hi-hats are quite hard and in your face and this is perfect to, um, to bring those up. So these hi-hats which I'm using here, uh, I've recently put together a sample pack for CR2, uh, which is made up of a lot of the samples we use for our tracks and these hi-hats in particular are on that. <coughs> you'll find that if you listen to this and you listen to the pack itself, the pack is made up of <coughs> basically all the sounds we use for our beats. So the majority of these beats will be taken from our sample pack. Uh, each of those have all been processed like here to give you the best sound possible. And then you'll still need to EQ it into your track to make it work. So as you see here, I'm still adding stuff onto them to make it work for this track particularly. Now, if I'll just copy and paste this bit of pack here. Within the track later on, the, these um, hi-hats will play simultaneously. So the reason why I'm moving them over here now is just so you can get an idea of how it sounds. So like I said before, I have the multi-hats going left and right. If I put them together here. <clears throat> if you're listening on your headphones or you're listening in the studio, you'll be able to hear that um, it gives it a lot more depth. Two very, very similar um, loops of, of hats, as you'll hear here. Apart from that's got some sort of rim in it, just to, just to give it a bit more life, I suppose. I suppose that, that's in the loop of, I've taken from the pack. And again, I've done pretty much the same as what I've done to the multi-hat right, um, with the kickstart limiter, the Saturn, um, and I think I've got some reverb on this for some reason. I've got reverb remover, so I can hear it without. You can hear there's a little bit of reverb on the original hits which I've put in. If I turn it on, it just takes it off. And again, this is really, really easy to use this reverb remover. It's just basically, you use this centerpiece here. Uh, that's just basically saying how much you want to remove. If you remove too much, you'll end up having a bit of a clicky sound. Like that. This would have been the original. You can hear there's a little bit of reverb originally from the actual sample itself. You can't really tell too much because I've cut up these loops. Um, so it's only got the amount that you can hear within the cut. That's why I've used this remover here to put it to 50%. It just tightens up that hi hat and makes that hi hat sound like one without reverb. So that's what it's there for. So it's good. Um, then I've got another another hats which are called quick hats, which here is again going down the right. Since the left, let's bring that back to right. And that's just another hat which is similar to the others but with a bit more um, high end on it, um, less bottom end. And this is basically just to give the whole high hat section of the track a lot more life, a lot more dynamics. And that's what I do with most of my tracks, you know, I'll, I'll get the, the high hat areas, get multiple high hats to do the job of one high hat, but I'll, I'll place them around the track, so one to the left, one to the right, one maybe to the middle, or one to the left, far to the left, and one um, midway to the left. Just giving the whole track dynamics, and it's solely down to how you want the track to sound, what sort of vibe you're going for. So there's no right or wrong to do it, you need to do it by ear. What you can see on this hat here is um, I've also sent it to an effects unit here. So I've got a separate channel at the bottom of Cubase down here, which is its own reverb unit. So if I find it on the list somewhere, I think it's over here. It's its own channel. So this channel here on this channel has this reverb unit, which is a KHS reverb, which again is really simple to use. You can, there's only six dials on it. Um, decay, dampen, size, width, early, mix. Um, all quite quite explanatory. The decay is what I've just brought down a little, little bit. The dampener brought down and the size, I've only given it a little bit just to give it a bit of 
just a little bit of reverb and I'll send whatever wants to use that reverb unit from their actual send, which I've done here on the hats. And then I can send it via here and can choose how much send we do. So if we do too much of it, we do more of it, there's more send, we do less, there's less. But just be aware when you do that, it, it increases the volume because you're adding it to another channel. So um, you might want to play around with that. I wouldn't use the volume on the actual reverb channel itself because it's going to change it for the other things you send it to. So that's why I'd use this send itself here, the send gain. So the inserts on this again, it's a kickstart, like I said, giving it more life, just letting it dip on the kick. Um, fab filter, EQ, just because I always usually EQ my, um, well, I EQ everything just to make it fit in the track. And then again, the SSL compressor. Then I move on to some shakers. Again, this here is just um, EQ'd, just similar to the other elements of the track. Kickstart again. But what I've used with this here, I've used an Ozone 8 imager, which is a stereo imaging tool. And it's dead easy to use. Um, well, the way I use it, it's dead easy to use. I don't understand the full complexities of the whole thing, but what I just do is click the sterilize, stereo, stereoize button here, which isn't usually on. So you press this on, you'll move this up to whatever you want to do. I mean, I fiddle around these, like I don't fiddle around the bottom end. I fiddle around the two mids and the top. Um, the best way to use this though, is when you do it on headphones, because when you use it in the studio, you need to make sure your speakers are fully set up perfectly in the right position for you to really understand what's going on. But um, to make life easier, just do it on your headphones and you'll hear it instantly. I mean, you can mix that accordingly to how you want it to do. So the reason why I put it on this sound here, the shaker, is to basically stereoize it more so, make it wider sounding, opposed to the hats which are already doing it themselves by being placed within the mix right, left and center. Um, I will use that Ozone on quite a few things nowadays. I don't know if I use it on a lot of things within this track. No, I haven't, but usually I put it on a clap to give that width. Um, I use it on quite a lot of the top end now. I've only recently started using it, so hence it not being on this track so much here. Um, then I've got the rim area. <laughs> the rim area. I've got, the, I've got the, the rim of the track, which is this. Again, I, I EQ everything the same way, the fab filter, SSL comp. Um, like I said, the SSL comp, you've got to be very careful to not use too much of it because you, you'll you lose the dynamic range of the track. Uh, sometimes you don't need it, but I'll use the SSL comp, not just to tighten things up, I'll use it to bring things into the mix, different to using the volume. So I'm not too sure if this is the best, best example, but I'll try. Yeah, so you can hear it. So if I turn on the SSL here, I've used it in this instance to bring the bring the actual sound itself into the track. So if I play it without um, the SSL being turned on. You can hear that that rim sound sits a little bit outside the mix. So if you were to use this, uh, if you were to open up this SSL comp from, from scratch. This threshold would be down here, um, uh, far to the right. So I'll turn it back on and I'll show you what I'll do. I'll just move this threshold and use it to bring it into the mix and you can hear it as I do it now. And as you can see, or as you can hear, that I brought it down to 3.4, and it, now that sound fits with, within the mix. And I'll use this on a lot of stuff. I've used it on the clap lead. So if I play the mix with it without the SSL being on, in fact, I'll turn the threshold up to how, how it would be when you open it up. So now I'll turn the threshold down um, and I'll bring the clap within, within to the mix. Now you can hear that the clap sits in the mix perfectly. So I'll go back again, I'll play it with 
out it on. And now with it on. And now you can hear the clap sits within the mix. But these look these things are so the, the changes are so small, but if you when you're actually I mean when you're looking and listening to this now, you're probably thinking, oh but there's no difference. But when you're actually going over and over it as a loop and you're focusing on that one sound, I always find when I when I focus on the sound, it always stands out and becomes more prominent. So you will hear the difference on that. So that's well worth using that SSL comp when bringing things into the mix because some people would otherwise use the volume on the mixing desk or the mix mixer within the computer. Um, but I find it a lot more easier and you have a lot more control just mixing it in that way. But again, like I said, you've got to be too, you've got to be careful that if the volumes turn too loud and you use a compressor to bring it too far in, you're going to lose the um, dy dynamics. Best way to, to show what I mean there. So if I get that clap, I'll turn the volume up. So that clap is now blatantly too loud. Some people would, would make the mistake now of using this compressor to bring it to bring it into the mix when it's too loud to start with. So here you go. And as you see, as you can see, you can do that, and it does fit it in to the track. But when you listen to the end mix, maybe not in your studio, but in a club or in your headphones, you will hear the difference that you've lost dynamics of, of that element. So that's why you should need to use this hand in hand with the volume. So if you get, turn it off there, and you get it in the best possible place in the mix by using the volume. So that clap now sounds in a good position to me. I've now used the compressor just to make it fit in that little bit better without losing the dynamics, just using a little bit of it and you should be able to hear a difference. Now you can hear that the clap now fits in the track properly. You've not lost too much dynamics of it because you haven't brought the threshold down too much. And there you go. That's with the clap. But you'd also do that with every other element. Well, I do it with every other element. So that's all we've got time for today. If you want to see the second half of this video and find out more about what I do in the studio, go and get the latest edition of Computer Music Magazine, which is out now.